everybody. Welcome back. My name is Coach G. Pye at STEAM Academy at Hartford Middle School. And today we're going to talk about Code.org Computer Science Discoveries Unit 3, Chapter 2, Lesson 18. That was a mouthful. All right, so at this point you've completed Chapter 1. The last thing you did was Lesson 17, which was an interactive card project. Pretty cool stuff. You've got to get some input in there had a great time, and what is all of that leading up to? Well, at the end of Chapter 2, you're actually going to build a game. So what you see on my screen right now is just the overview of Chapter 2, Building Games. Um, lesson 18, which we're going to get into today, is learning about velocity. 19 is a collision detection. 20 is a mini project for a side scroller. 21 is complex sprite movement. 22 is about collisions again. 23 is another mini project about a flying game or flyer game. 24 is functions. 25 is a game design process. 26 is using the game design process. And then finally, 27, the thing everyone's been waiting for. Project 27 is where you design a game. And that is the end of Unit 3. Introduction to Game Lab in JavaScript. So, without further ado, let's get started with Lesson 18 Velocity. All right, so our question of the day here is How can programming languages hide complicated patterns so that it is easier to program? So, we're going to do a brief review of how counter patterns are used to move sprites. And then you guys are going to get introduced to the idea of hiding those patterns in a single block in order to help manage the complexity of the programs. We're then going to head out to Code Studio to try out the new blocks that set a sprite's velocity directly and look at the various ways that they are able to code more complex behaviors in your sprites. So you've got three new blocks here. You've got sprite.rotation speed. Sprite.VelocityX and Sprite.VelocityY. So let's get started. All right, level two, Velocity X. One way to move sprites in Game Lab is the counter pattern. For example, Sprite1.X equals Sprite1.X plus one moves the sprite by one pixel each frame of the drawing loop. This pattern is so common that sprites have a velocity x property that does this for you. Do this. Drag a sprite.velocityx block directly below where your sprite is created. Write the name of your sprite in the block. Assign the velocity x property a value of 1. Run the code. See what happens. Then rerun the code, giving the velocity x property a different value. And we're going to take a look at watch changing. All right, so I'm going to hit run to see what I got. I got a fish and a fish scene and nothing more. Okay, so it wants me to add something. I'm going to click this show me where. All right, add your block here. Okay, so I need a sprite dot velocity x that's what it said I'm going to name it fish and then it said to give it a value of one okay so fish velocity x equals one hey look at that it's moving all right so what's happening the x property is being updated by one okay all right so let me change this number let's do five Wow, okay, so five makes it move faster. Now I'm gonna try, I wonder, what about negative two? Ooh, swimming backwards, it's a special fish. All right, so what's changing? Well, the X value is changing, depending on whether I use a positive or a negative number. All right, let's hit finish and see where this is going, because this looks exciting. <laughs> Questions to consider. Why might you want to use a velocity block instead of the counter pattern? 
and give an example of a counter pattern and how you could use a velocity block instead. I'm originally from South Carolina, and now I'm all the way over in California in Silicon Valley. And here, software is all about optimism. It's not just a means to an end. It's this thing that gives us hope to solve every problem that the world potentially has. Moving your sprites around the screen means using a very familiar pattern, the counter pattern. This pattern lets you add to the position or rotation of your sprite on each tick of the draw loop. So it looks like it's moving or rotating at different speeds. Here's an example we've seen before. Using the counter pattern with the sprite's x property, we can control the sprite's velocity, how fast it's moving in a particular direction. If we add a larger amount to the x position, the sprite looks like it's moving faster. Adding a smaller amount makes the sprite look like it's moving more slowly. You've been using the counter pattern to control the sprite's velocity a lot. In programming, when the same pattern happens many times, you can often hide those details inside another block. In our example, that block is velocity x. The velocity x property hides the details of the counter pattern that changes the sprite's x position. Whatever number you assign to this property will automatically be added to your sprite's x position on the next tick of the draw loop. This program creates a sprite gives it an animation, and then draws it on the screen. Now let's give that sprite a velocity by setting its velocity x property to 1, just once, at the beginning of the program. When we rerun the program, we see that the sprite's position is updated. Under the hood, the velocity x property and the counter pattern are used to update the sprite's position, moving it across the screen. The other new properties that work in a similar way our velocity y, which controls velocity in the vertical direction, and rotation speed, which controls how fast the sprite rotates. The under the hood behaviors of velocity x, velocity y, and rotation speed are all things you've tackled in previous lessons. Now, we have to let those blocks handle the details for us and explore new ways of moving sprites on the screen. Awesome. I'm excited for this one. Let's see what we've got in level four. Moving down, here's a feather sprite that should be floating down the screen. If velocity x makes the sprite move to the right, can you find the block that makes the feather move down? Find the block that will make the feather sprite go down the screen. Use it outside the draw loop. Okay, show me where. All right, so we're going to put it right there at level, le or, yeah, level three. So if, let me turn my grid on, if X moves it to the right, then Y is going to move it down. So I'm going to use velocity Y. I'm going to change the label to feather. Get rid of this out of my way. And I'm going to just start with a one. All right, so let's see what happens now. Ooh, the feather is falling. Now remember, in chapter one, we learned to put um, the counter patterns inside the function draw loop. We don't have to put velocity inside the function draw loop this time. Okay, pretty cool stuff. Let's hit finish and move on. Da -da -da! Level five, rotation speed. You can use rotation speed to make your sprites spin. If you want your sun to rotate by two degrees each time it's drawn, you can use the sun rotation speed gets two before the draw loop after you create the sprite. Do this. Make the sun rotate by three degrees each time using this rotation speed block. Okay. So I'm going to grab, close this up. Grab the rotation speed block. I'm going to drop it right underneath where I created the variable. In the label sun that rotation, and they said they wanted it to update. Whoops, three degrees each time. So I'm going to put a three in there and see what happens. There we go. We've got a rotating sun.
da, da, da. pretty easy so far. Level six, controlling speed. You use rotation speed outside the draw loop to make your sprite rotate when the program started. You can also use rotation speed inside the draw loop to change the speed of the sprite during the game. For example, a sprite can start rotating when the user presses the space bar and it will keep rotating until it's told to stop. Do this. Locate, or sorry, look at the if statement inside the draw loop that checks whether the space bar has been pressed. Use the rotation speed block to make the color wheel start spinning when the user presses the space bar. Okay, I'm gonna click show me where. Close this up. Okay, so look at this code. Boy, that's super handy. All right, we got a variable wheel, function draw, background blue, wheel starts spinning when the user presses the space bar, space bar down. So now we're gonna do sprite.rotation and it's called wheel, that's the label. And I'm just gonna set it at two. All right, so let's see what happens. Starts at nothing, I'm gonna hit my space bar now and the wheel starts spinning. How cool is that? All right, let's see what else we're gonna get into today. Level seven, changing velocity with position. One advantage to using the velocity blocks inside the conditionals or if blocks is that your sprite keeps moving even after the condition stops being true. For example, you only had to press a key once to start the color wheel spinning, and it kept spinning forever. The code below uses if statements to make a fish sprite move in different directions. Do this. Look at the if statement that if statements that check the sprite's position and set its velocity. With your partner, or with yourself, discuss what you think the code will do, and write your answer below. Once you have submitted your answer, run the code. All right, so let's look. We've got fish, the velocity set to two. So I think the fish is gonna start moving to the right because velocity X equals two, so that's adding two. So the fish is gonna start by swimming to the right. Then we've got draw background if fish is X is less than zero then the fish animation is fish r and the velocity is two. Once the fish x becomes greater than 400, then the fish is gonna to change to fish l and the velocity is gonna be negative two. Ooh, so I think what's gonna happen here is this fish is gonna swim back and forth across the screen. And I think the sprite is going to change directions. Fish R, I bet that's fish right, and fish L, I bet that's fish left. The fish will change directions and swim back and forth across the screen and also change sprites. All right, so let's hit run and see if I'm correct. Swimming to the right, swimming, ooh, I was correct. Swimming to the left. Oh my goodness, how fun is that? All right, so let's hit finish. One more time, boom, okay, let's hit finish and move on. Da -da -da! Level eight, back and forth. This ball bounces back when it hits the bottom of the screen. Can you make it bounce back when it hits the top of the screen? Do this, run the code and see how it works. Look at how conditionals and velocity are used to make the ball bounce at the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> oh my goodness, look at that. They got an extra E, a misspelling. Add code to make the ball bounce at the top of the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna hit run, see what I got. Bounce. 
and it flies away. Okay. So this is kind of like the fish left and right, but now we're doing up and down. So if ball dot y is greater than 380, because that's at the bottom of the screen, remember, show grid, the large y numbers are at the bottom, then the ball velocity y gets a negative 5, meaning it starts to bounce the other direction. So now I'm going to use another if statement. So if ball dot y, oh, I probably need a math block, is less than, okay, so if ball dot y, now why did I choose a less than? Because I'm talking about these numbers up here. Okay, y. So if ball.y is less than 2, because remember all the way at the top is 1, less than 2, then I want ball velocity y to equal positive 5. Whoops, I messed that up. Ball dot velocity y positive 5. And this shouldn't be sprite, this should be ball. Okay, let's see if I'm right. Reset, run. Should bounce. And should bounce. There we go. Now, once again, why did I choose two? It's because I didn't want the ball to completely disappear off the screen. And remember, your x and y values of your sprites are measured from the center of the sprite, not the edge. So I wanted that ball to still remain mostly on the screen to look like it is, in fact, bouncing from the top of the screen. And that's it. Let's move forward. Da -da -da. All right. I choose our own. Let's see what we're doing. I'm going to choose the paintbrush. <clears throat> and remember, if you do both, I'll give you a bonus. All right, dip the paintbrush in the paint. Use a conditional to send the paintbrush down. If the down arrow is pressed, use a different conditional to send the paintbrush up if it reaches the palette. Hint, you will need to check its Y property. Need to check its Y property. All right, so let me hit run and see what I got first. A paintbrush and a palette. I got a draw loop. Okay, so I need a conditional. So if... If my key down is the down button, if I push the down button, what's going to happen? If I push the down button, then sprite velocity, and it's a pal, no, it's a brush. And brush velocity y is going to get a positive 4. Okay, let's test that first. And push the down arrow. Okay, it goes down. But then it just keeps going, and I don't want that. So if I push down the brush velocity y equals 4. Now I need another if statement. If... Uh, if brush, here I need a greater than sign. I'm thinking back to the other puzzle we just did with greater than and less than. Okay, so I'm thinking about this logically. So if the sprite's y position, whoops, whoops, grab this. So if sprite dot y, and it's not sprite, it's brush, becomes greater than 380, then I want sprite y velocity to change directions. And it's brush. I want it to get a negative 4. Okay. But then I don't want it to fly off the screen at the top either. So I'm going to do another if. So if math drawer, uh, where's my greater than and less than? If, well, let's do this. 
if I push the space bar, then sprite y velocity will equal, what if I put zero? I wonder if it'll stop it. Let's see what happens. Okay, push the down, floats up, push zero. Oh, it didn't like that. Perhaps your string sprite with quotes. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, well that didn't work, so let's try <clears throat> getting rid of that, and we'll say sprite dot y brush dot y will equal um, fifty. Okay, and again, there's many options for you for this level. Bounces up. If I hit the space bar. That didn't work. It didn't stop it from moving. Interesting. 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 All right. So let me check my directions because I might not need it to stop. It says use a conditional to send the paintbrush down if the down arrow is pressed. Use a different conditional to send the paintbrush up if it reaches the palette. Hint, you will need to check its Y property. All right. So I've actually satisfied the puzzle even though I couldn't get it to stop. So I satisfied the puzzle with these two pieces of code here. So if down is pressed, the velocity equals four. And if the paintbrush Y becomes greater than 380, then the paintbrush velocity reverses to negative four. Okay, and so this is what happens. Push the down arrow, it gets so far, and it goes back up. And that's it. Da, da, da. All right, we're going to hit finish. <clears throat> and let's see what we've got for our assessment level. All right, so the code below should make the fish start moving right as soon as you press run. Using conditional statements and the velocity block, you can make it continually swim back and forth. Do this. Look at the three if statements inside the draw loop. Use a sprite dot velocity x block inside each if statement to make the three following movements. If the user presses the right arrow key, move the fish to the right. If the fish gets to the right hand side of the screen, move the fish to the left. If the fish gets to the left hand side of the screen, stop the fish. All right, folks. So assessment level time, let's see what you can do. It's combining a lot of different things that we just learned about in the previous levels here. So good luck with that. And then last but not least, your challenge level. <clears throat> Looks like we got a couple options here, not many. Changing course, can you change velocities four separate times? Ooh, looks interesting. So that's it for Lesson 11 Velocity. Remember, when we're talking about gameplay, the ability for sprites to move is very important. So hope you have fun with Lesson 18, and I will see you later.